Get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. You like that? You like that? You like that? There he is. Mr. Netflix himself. <laughs> Mr. Game Winning Drive. Secondary That's Slayer. Sad. Mr. Catering. Father of the Year. What a good Dude, dad. He does seem like a really good dad. Just a, a caring dad. Um, this is Purple Daily. Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl at some point. At any point. Hopefully quickly before we die. <laughs> and we are in the middle of our three episode run here. Recapping the Netflix quarterback series from a Kirk Cousins perspective. So we did a dive yesterday into and these themes kind of run all over the place, but we tried to keep it sort of to the first two episodes. This will be sort of the, the third and fourth episodes, which we'll get into some of the themes, but it was uh, the Buffalo game was very, very heavily featured here. The Buffalo comeback. Yes. And may, may I suggest after watching this entire thing in one day too, that I know there was initially when we um, put out there that that we were going to embark on doing these reviews, a lot of spoiler concerns. In retrospect, now maybe for Mahomes, I don't think for Kirk, there's a lot of things we're going to we're going to spoil. Like I think there's a lot of overarching conversations that are intriguing, but you know, there's no like one thing where you're like, oh, you can't talk about that because it's a huge shocker. Well, no, on the on these podcasts, you can spoil everything. No, we're, we're I, assuming no, that I know, but I'm I'm saying fans were concerned that oh my god, there's going to be all these things that that you guys are going to talk. This to me became a lot more of a confirmation of who Kirk is, and it's interesting background stuff. But like, if I now watched our shows before I watched the Netflix show, I would actually be more excited to watch the Netflix show, knowing what I'm going to see. If that makes sense, so it's not like a movie full of spoilers. We're like, we're like, here's how it ends. Right. The like, here's actually how, here the Giants. The big, the big You're not going to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth and eight, he completes a nine-yard pass to Jefferson. You know, it's so, funny because we'll get and then we'll do a third recap too, because we're trying to like pace this so that people can kind of watch it. We're the psychos, at least you and me, that watched all eight episodes in the first day. Really good, uh, but they they did a little blurb on the fourth and eighth thing. But I watched that play again, thinking maybe it's different this time. Maybe he'll you know find somewhere else for the football. But real quick, this show is presented by our friends at TCL, award winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. TCL makes more than just TVs; they offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. You can learn more at TCL.com, uh, an official TV partner of the National Football League. And a quick shout out to our friends also over at Power Lodge and Miller Marine. So it's uh, right in the middle of lake season here, pontoon mm -hmm. season. And uh, Miller Marine and Power Lodge are the center hub in this state here and the upper Midwest area for pontoons, specifically Bennington pontoons and tritunes, which you can find door buster pricing right now at Miller Marine and St. Cloud in all Power Lodge locations. If you're ever th thinking of getting into the world of a Tritune or a Bennington right now, because as you, you can see, and Phil just talked about, the prices are just so good. Right now is the time, and this is the ideal time. It's July. We're going into August. Hot, muggy. You're saying, how can I cool off? What better way? What better way than to, than to get out there on that pontoon on a gorgeous day, enjoy the water, and enjoy what all of you need, because you are obviously Minnesota sports fans, throttle therapy at its finest. Sports dad could not recommend this higher for a way to relax <laughs> before the winter comes. Yeah, go to millermarine.com, powerlodge.com to check out the inventory. So, all right, let's uh, let's go around the room here. And uh, let's, let's we kind of did like statements form yesterday. I think that works well enough. So we'll start with Judd. What, what is your main statement or takeaway from episodes three and four that again featured i guess they focused heavily on the bills game yep. and the and the injuries like the rib related injuries that cousins grinded through for almost the whole season last year all right so i actually think among the episodes that involve kirk cousins this is one of the best ones and my first statement is this this if you had any questions about the o'connell's impact on kirk and the relationship there and how important that was post Zimmer. This 
episode in particular and the Bills game answers it. Down to, and I, I'm a little bit surprised. I'm very glad. I'm a little bit surprised they okayed this. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think one of the most interesting Kirk snippets is in the Buffalo game when he decided to try the quarterback sneak at a huge moment at that point in your mind, win or lose. And he did it by himself, sort of panicked, comes to the sideline and O'Connell, who, by the way, can you imagine, I don't mean to disparage his talents, but can you imagine if he had had the physical acumen to be a quarterback in this league? Because Kevin O'Connell is wired so well. O'Connell doesn't melt down. He says, I was going to call timeout there instead of you trying to run the play. He says, he goes, did you call that yourself? Self. Did, did yep. you call that yourself? I was going to call a timeout and then says... Um, you know you can go over the top there instead of trying mm -hmm. to sneak off to the side. So basically says, you should have allowed me to call timeout. You should have gone up and over. And then basically says, from now on, his point was, give us a chance. You didn't really give us a chance. The dynamic, but he never does it with like a anger. He basically teaches in a moment when very few yeah. people, I think, are teaching. They're screaming and yelling. Zimmer. My God, I the just thought that. The, I <sighs> thought, well, 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 but I mean, basically, like I was going to call a timeout. Did you call out yourself? What are you doing? He's basically pissed as hell, but but keeping as calm as he possibly can. I thought that was such an interesting insight into the relationship. And again, it's why O'Connell was so important for Kirk because. Zimmer either would have gone absolutely ballistic or walked away. And Kevin O'Connell used that as a teaching moment for a guy that's been doing this a very long time. So intriguing. Yeah. He was yeah. pissed. Like, he was pissed. Yeah. It was, it was really, I think he even says to him when they're, he asks again, like, do you think you got in? And, he, and then Kirk even doubts himself in like, I, I mean, I thought I did. And I think even KLC goes, you didn't get in, brother. Like, they're watching it on the, on the replay with it being challenged. He goes, you didn't get in. And you should have given us a chance. Yeah, it was fascinating to see that. I'm, I would, I would judge. I was kind of shocked they showed that part. It and was when great. They, well, do the teams get? Who gets like final edit? Do the Vikings get to comb through it and say? I think so. Yeah, and and I think I think that that they do because there are definitely things that I that as the series advances, I wanted to see and I didn't. But KOC's exact comment to Kirk in the heat of that play, which by the way, it looks like they're going to lose now. Like, like that was not a, yeah. The conversation is happening as if the game has been lost. Yes. Right. Like, and yeah. O'Connell's exact quote is you've just got to let me help you. Dude, this is okay. Let me, let me go next year because there's so many, since we're down this path here. All right. I have a lot of positive things to say about Kirk from these two episodes too, but I will say since we're already on this subject, we started to see what flustered Kirk looks like behind the scenes on the sideline during a game, right? The yep. Buffalo game in particular where he's, and to, and to his credit, my God, that guy's taking crazy shots up the middle, right? You got, you got Ed Ingram and Ezra Cleveland going back to like check on him after basically every other pass play. He's <laughs> probably in no position to be even standing upright after some of these hits, but he's tough as nails physically. But on the mental side, you really saw starting with this Buffalo game that when you get pressure on him or when things go sort of off script and off schedule, they're not going the way that they should go as you've mapped out your week, right? He does get really frustrated and even dejected and can even yep. like kind of shut down a little bit. He's got, he's got one of those like, uh, like flighty personalities where you're in a, it, it, maybe there's tension or there's an argument or the game flow is not going the way that you want. And he goes and kind of like sits on the bench in isolation, right? That's how he kind of clears his mind. And, uh, and even like d he'll disengage from teammates who are coming up asking him like, are you okay? Are you sore? And he's just like, basically like everyone get away from me. I need to just sort of be frustrated for a while, but you can tell, and this is just my reading on it the way that Kevin O'Connell reacts to him and talks to him and some of his teammates and other coaches, you can tell him getting frustrated and dejected is kind of a thing and a theme that everyone has to work around sometimes. And so you saw KOC constantly coming up. And this is not just the Buffalo game. This is throughout the whole uh, 
docuseries. Hey, don't get frustrated. Hey, Kirk, don't get frustrated. Hey, man, let's, you just need to like take a deep breath right now and calm down. And it's almost like Kevin O'Connell, he's less of like a, like an offensive coach for Kirk. He's almost like a mental coach out there for Kirk. Like, hey, man, it's okay. We're going to be okay. Hey, trust me, man. Like, I, I'm going to call the right play. That read's going to be there. Dude, just like, and, and Kevin is great at it. And when Kirk can kind of snap out of those flustered mindsets and lock in, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So that was such a, a just a telling dynamic, I thought. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. interesting watching them wanting to be on the same page. Like I wrote down even in episode four, like KOC wants to be wants him on the same page at all times. Like he wants it, and you can tell that relationship did not ex- exist with Zimmer. Even the fact of when he's spitting out verbiage, and I know Mike coached defense mostly, and obviously KOC is offense heavy. But can you imagine like Kirk going up to Zimmer in the middle of a chaotic situation like that in Buffalo, saying like we need to do this, or against Arizona, like we need to go and we need to run this play. That never happened, I feel like, in the three years that Zimmer was here with him. But it's more that Mike didn't care at all about him. Like, Kevin is not... I don't think there's a huge problem with the football stuff. I think it's in-game mental stuff. And and literally, and this is what's so intriguing, and I think we've talked about this and thought this, but but the confirmation comes from this documentary. Literally keeping Kirk engaged mentally... Um, because he's obviously very cerebral. He's very smart. But I really think the word is when things go wrong, he starts to pout. Like there's a couple of scenes here where O'Connell tries to keep him engaged and he won't do it. He walks away and just goes and sits by himself, which, you know what? If he played a lot of other positions, would be absolutely fine. But quarterback, you're you're the guy everyone's looking at. And that's and there, what makes this so intriguing. He even said at one point, I can't remember, again, some of this is blending together, but his ribs are sore. The game's not going the way that it should. I think it was maybe the Cowboys game or the Colts. It might have been the Colts game. And his words, I'm paraphrasing, uh, to Netflix and NFL films were, when all this stuff's happening, I just want, I don't want, like Thielen tried to come up to him at one point and ask about a route or yep. something. And he's like, I don't. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just want to do my job. I just want to, he, like, he got, he kind of retreats into what he knows, which is, let me just control what I can control. But then you juxtapose it with Patrick Mahomes, for instance, when there's adversity or things are happening or there's a big moment or he, whatever, he almost flips it inside out. He's going to go around. He's going to walk halfway out on the field, high five every last offensive lineman after an extra point, right? He's working the sidelines. It's a, it's just a different way going about his business. Like, and it, it tells you why Patrick Mahomes, aside from the talent is also just one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. It's not just the throws that he makes. It's the way that he gets everyone involved, the way that he rises up and sort of hulks up during moments of adversity. So there's a moment in the bills game that I wrote down and just to be clear, Kirk is hurt. Like his ribs, his ribs were clearly, and I don't recall him showing up on the injury report at any point last year and perhaps he didn't miss he practice did. time did he, he, did, okay. he had, yep yeah he had injury with ribs, ribs. yep so so times. his yep. ribs were hurt like all sure. year but the exchange is that there's i think they're around midfield in buffalo Thielen walks up after a play and asks if the nickel fell off him on a certain route and kirk shoots back i don't know and limps and it's, he's clearly hurt but yeah he for uh, he compartmentalizes almost like he has to. And so like, he's not prepared to talk about a route there where ordinarily he probably would be. It's just, again, it's such an interesting look into him as a person and what he can process and what is difficult for him to process because the juxtaposition is Mahomes, whose ankle by the end of the thing is just a complete bleep show. And he never disengages really from what's going on with the team. Yep. Can, let's can we do the injury? Let's just you talk about the because that was the other major theme starting in episode three was the the rib injuries that started. I think they started with getting the wind knocked out of him in Washington, and then yep. it carried through all the way basically till the end of the season. Yep. And you know, I we've been kind of nitpicking Kirk here in the first fifteen minutes, but dude, the beating he took last year. Episode three, I believe it is, opens up with him in a cold tub with a montage of epic hits allowed by the interior of the offensive line. 
he basically played through what looked to be anyways like excruciating pain for the middle part of the season and he stood in there took more hits than any quarterback in the league because he's not going to Lamar Jackson move his legs out of the pocket right like he's got to stand in there and make those throws so my I guess my biggest praise of Kirk watching this and then just kind of linking it back to the season what a tough Son of a you-know-what, man. Physically. Just some of the mental stuff we can nitpick here and there, but to stand in there time and time again in these big moments, your team needs a drive in the fourth quarter. They needed eight fourth-quarter comebacks. Yes. And to throw some of the passes he threw in the face of uh, of physical pain and pressure was was really impressive, and he deserves a ton of credit for that. And he doesn't miss games. Like, he doesn't yeah. miss games. It, it's incredible um, now, because I'm, I'm assuming that 2022 was not the first time that he got his ass kicked, right? Go back through his career. I do not believe he has ever missed a game because of injury. That is an incredible testament um, to his ability to to bounce back, to keep playing. Like, I love it, the, as I think we discussed on the show yesterday, the Washington game, where he literally says, I thought Justin Jefferson scored so I stayed down. I would have gotten up. Yeah, that's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. He he takes a beating in that Bills game, and even um, I wrote down. He, he sounds like me the morning after drinking, like ah, uh, God, like just trying to get up and, and being a function human being. Um, there was actually you know Judd was saying yesterday how th- he noticed like similarities in 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 Judd that were in Kirk Cousins, and I noticed similar things too, especially during that Buffalo game. Not that I was daggering my opponents, um, but. He hates being asked questions when he's trying to focus and he's clearly not all there. I'm I'm the exact same way. It's why I tried, like when I work from home, I have to be excluded because I, I hate being asked questions while I'm trying to do a task. It drives me bonkers. Um, so, and now he's a quarterback. I'm in a, I'm a producer on podcasts and radio, so it's a much different vein. <laughs> but it, it, it I was like, man, I am the same way when like I'm trying to focus or like I'm not feeling hundred percent and someone's like in my ear yammering about something that does not affect me right now. Stop talking to me. I'm trying to get through this right now. Yeah. Different vein for quarterbacks, but I wrote that down too. They're like, Oh, I'm kind of in that same vein as well. Yeah. Well he would another theme too is that he just seems to have a hard time moving past imperfections and mistakes like the end of that Buffalo game he was more mad about the way that things didn't go the way that they should right than happy about the crazy miracle win right yes and then even afterwards like people are praising him that game the Colts game and instead of just like oh man wow like just kind of being in the moment what a crazy game he's like well it's not the way it was supposed to go or well that was really stressful he was kind of you know, still feeling sort of the mistakes that were made in the game just what a but again like I, I said this on the the first recap episode yesterday that we did I think some of those OCD things that he just hyper obsesses over the details and the script and everything the way it's supposed to be if he didn't have that meticulous mindset he's not one of the top 10 to 15 quarterbacks in the world too so it's hard to tell him hey you got to shut that part of your brain off maybe Maybe that's just who he is, right? Like maybe there is the, the next level would be shutting that part of your brain off whenever you can so that you can move past things and be more in the moment, right? But I don't know if he can. Hot take. I would now love to see this league scouting reports on Cousins after the combine, his draft year, because we know that, that Russell Wilson dropped because of size. He shouldn't have, but he did, right? Kirk Cousins' physical attributes and talent, his toughness, what he brings to me, I think he, he was a fourth-round pick probably because of the actual psychology testing. I don't think because there's too much talent there physically to be like, well, teams saw, you know, teams looked at that and thought, and I'm not saying he's a first-round pick. So you're saying the I, psychology dropped him? I think the psychology testing pick. dropped him. Because oh. of what teams are afraid of when, because I, I, you know, these are multi million dollar investments, especially like the first two rounds. That well, he are, did get a 33 out of 50, which is very good on the Wonderlick. No, but, but I'm that's, saying that's more when, IQ than EQ. Oh, yeah, he's a very right? smart dude. Yeah, he is a very smart dude. I'm saying in, in the time, and I believe at the time it was you got a 15 minute period to sit down with players. I'm saying I bet that cost him way more than anything he did physically. 
he's there's yeah, a lot he's, there. He's you know, yeah, there's a lot of men, mental chatter that kind of comes yep. out in this in this documentary. Mm-hmm. But you know what's kind of crazy, and you you, you kind of see this with him not in the overthinking, but the way that he like he really understands how to read a game plan going in. Right, he understands concepts. He's he. I wouldn't call him like Tom Brady or Peyton Manning or like even Patrick Mahomes in terms of because I because I, I I do think. Here's here's my point, I guess. If your body can hold up, and I'm I guess I'm worried that uh, his won't with all the hits that he's taking. Sure. If your body can hold up between ages like 34 and and maybe 40 as an NFL quarterback can be kind of a cheat code. It's a sweet spot where you've now been processing NFL defenses for over a decade. You've played in like 150 or 200 NFL games or whatever it is, right? And your mind is now like everything is slow. Everything. If you were to ask Tom Brady at age 46 or Peyton Manning, however old he is, right? Could you process a defense right now? It would be like the matrix for them. Just everything moving. It's like slow motion. Yep. But your, but your body can't do it anymore. Uh-huh. So if you can get to that sweet spot, it's kind of where like Aaron Rodgers has been winning MVP awards after age 35. Drew Brees was there throwing for 5,000 yards when he was 38 years old, whatever it was. He's in that sweet spot right now. He's seen enough football. He's played enough. Can his body hold up and match where his mind is at for the next three or four years? But what you're saying dovetails perfectly into this. It's why O'Connell begs him to trust to trust him. O'Connell's yeah. basically saying, you're in, in the sweet spot, and I'm the cheat code. Yeah. He's literally giving Kirk the, the backup. That and I sense he does trust Kirk. So to be clear, I'm not saying he doesn't, but in moments where where it gets to be too much, what O'Connell's saying, come to me, because it does it's not too much mentally for me. That's what that's where the relationship I thought I I basically couldn't get enough of seeing those two talk and and how they went about their business towards each other. And I thought I think that's one of the most it's not surprising. But it's one of the most interesting things to actually watch it in action. You and I were kind of texting too because we didn't. Uh, you and I are further along, so we we were texting each other, not wanting to spoil things for Declan. Declan requested no spoilers on this thread. And one of the things Judd and I were texting about Dex was how we both came out of this. I definitely think, on a personal level, like Kirk seems like a great dad, a great husband, a fun hang. Both yep. Mahomes and Kirk seem like super fun hangs in totally different ways. Mm-hmm. So I come away thinking like, you know, it'd be, it would be, I would, I would probably have a good time hanging out with with old Kirky boy. Uh, but our respect level for Kevin O'Connell and the way that he communicates, the way that he goes about his business, through the roof. Yeah, the way that he handles like a stressed out Kirk on the sidelines, and do, he doesn't pour gas on the fire. He's always like kind of diffusing and calming things down. Yep. Super impressive. Yeah, that that trait is so tough like i was just saying how it it upsets me sometimes when people are asking like annoying questions or you know just trying to figure out what i want to do but having that person in your back pocket that can really calm you my my mother was really good at that with me if i was always overthinking right like my mom was like one of those few people that could really just slow things down and make things clear for me i mean koc has that in them where you can to judd's point if he had the physical traits my god he would have been an incredible quarterback but he didn't but he has all that mental side. It's it's really you're getting a good glimpse of Kevin O'Connell in this documentary, just as much as you are with Kirk and Mahomes. Yes. You like that on three, one, two, three. You like it! Before we get to some other themes from sort of this episode's three and four portion of uh, the Netflix series, let's shout out our friends over at Three Jack here. What a fan, dude! I just I, I would just shout out the the, <laughs> the nachos just specifically, actually. If we yeah, could just have, rename it to the Three Jack Nachos, I would actually uh, the Purple Daily yeah, Nachos. We should actually email our friend and see if we can figure out if we can uh, we could even do that. that. We happen, can get those yeah. loaded nachos, that chicken sandwich, that steak sandwich, great salmon, and on that salad option too. Okay, there's plenty of great food options, and of course, you know you can get in your sim bays. You can go get some swings in in case the tee sheets on the actual golf courses are all full. You can go to threejack.com. Great selection of beer too. It's summertime. You got. Uh, Target Fields concert coming up. Go enjoy a nice little uh, pony up yourself at a happy hour there, too, on the patio. Go to 3Jack and 3Jack.com. Yep. And, Judd, tell the audience, too, if uh, they're not super handy around their homes like the three of us, who they can turn to. The answer to that is very simple. That is uh, Finch Home Solutions, our friend Cody, a huge 
uh, PD fan, a huge Vikings fan. Look at that van. That van is going to show up outside your house if you're a Vikings fan. You're like, everything's going to be fine because look at that gorgeous van, Vikings colors, any electrical issue, big or small. I'm talking about, you know, if you need a light changed, an outlet changed, Finch is there. Finch can do it. If you have an old house that needs its home uh, rewired completely, Finch can do that too. And I'm going to tell you right now, courteous, efficient, and absolutely a great experience when Finch shows up to your house. Tell them that the guys from PD sent you 612-357-2604 or finchhomesolutions.com. There's a form on their site that you can fill out. Again, finchhomesolutions.com. They're going to show up. They're going to take care of things. And yes, if you want, they will certainly talk purple with you as training camp approaches. Finch Home Solutions. Also, we know that a lot of you, uh, as mentioned when talking about 3Jack, are also golfers or golf fans. And in a couple of weeks here, the 3M Open takes the Twin Cities by storm. Oh, Billy Horschel's in. Billy Horschel's in. I'm a Billy Horschel guy. Love me some Billy Horschel. Gary Woodland is in. You got Tony Finau coming back. Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, is a commit for this year as well. A great field. Fina, we look into a defender set. He's got it right there as pictured uh, on the YouTube audience uh, for them as well. Go to 3mopen.com July 24th through the 30th to get your tickets. Great PGA Tour event. Go to 3mopen.com to get your tickets and see some of the best golfers on the planet. Awesome, awesome. All right, boys. Um, let me throw this one at you. I believe it was episode four that started off with a big montage about just like the verbiage that oh, goes God. into calling an NFL play and what everything <laughs> means. It, and they had this like kind of fun, whimsical music playing in the background as they cut back and forth between Mariota and Cousins and Mahomes explaining, you know, jet, triple, XZ, whatever, right? And I guess my statement off this is it really makes you feel less than as a fan or a media member when those guys start talking about play concepts and all the different elements that you have to account for and the fact that every week, these guys who've been in the league for 10 years, right? Mariota, Cousins, and they have to recite plays back to themselves, either with the wife doing it or recording the plays on a phone. It's yep. like studying for a test on a week-to-week -week basis based on the game plan just to remember what the play call is in the huddle. And it just made me feel like, wow, I'm an idiot, even more than usual. So again, I try to put myself in the shoes of the quarterbacks, and what I did here was I I decided what if I take how I upload and save an audio file and I convert it into a quarterback play and see if it makes sense to you guys as an actual play of what I do for oh, this. Do you okay? have this written out? I have this written oh, out. My God. Ready for this? Okay, All right, I'll try to do this. All right. Control C, amplify, dynamic processing, compander, control S, MP3, go. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> but what does that tell the two of us to do see that's the thing is you're literally putting people in the place so like that that would mean that we would have assignments off of what yeah. you just said yeah. control c meaning copy yep okay. i got that copy yep amplify meaning raise meaning raise the audio up sometimes the levels are low so I'll you do raise that. the app that's my audio job. up okay I'll amplify. That dynamic processing is a certain type of compander that will then take the audio and make it nice okay. and clean and, and a nice little box for you Control S meaning save. You've now saved the product. You saved it as an MP3. So an MP3 has much more of a smaller size, so it's not going to take up a bunch of space. And the uh, li a listener won't have to upload a bigger file. Go meaning go. Go listen to it. Just go. Go give hot takes or go yep. go listen. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. Like the amount of just verbiage that you have to consume and eat. And then if you if you're TJ Hawkinson and you come in and like, do you know what some of these is it a different language than what you had in Detroit and just but, everything? So here's my question, though, off, off of that, because I agree with what both of you guys just said about the complexity. But then when Sam Bradford, who had done this for a, a while, but comes to a completely new system for a week and then plays, do they overcomplicate things unnecessarily? Because Sam Bradford, in his first game here, played a really good game, and I just want... I, I hear those play calls and I I sometimes think, you know what? Do you need to get as cute as you do with the verbiage to fool so, the defense? Yeah, I think you do because you it's not it's not even it's the 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 design is fooling the defense. The verbiage is telling everyone what to do. 
Yes. Well, right. It, so I yes. don't know. Like, and now, now the Patriots made a big deal out of like ten years ago, taking all of that and making here's everything in a verbal bin, and that's going to have one word. Right. So if I say cat, 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 right, it right. means all of this. Exactly. But then the other thing in this montage that you'll notice is here's the mouthful for the play, but then they also have like a kill. So here's the you know everything blah 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 play kill to blah 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 meaning. Okay, if we get up to the line of scrimmage and it's single high safety instead of two high safety, right. we're going to kill, kill, kill to this other thing that I remember what I told you in the huddle. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's crazy. It's an, yeah. Um, so, off that statement, my statement about the entire episode of four, which is uh, called Mind Games, is this you can see why the Chiefs are so good. And Mahomes is the driving force, no question about it. But they do a, a, a series in um, or a segment in episode four about the Chiefs, what they call lab on the field, which is on Wednesday. They allow players to introduce and make up plays. And Andy Reid ca calls it the laboratory on the field and enables players, empowers them really to pitch ideas for plays that if he likes, he will okay. use. The involvement that that includes, because here's my thing with this sport. I think far too often it's coaches who are like, this is what we should do. And this is, and they basically don't account for, okay, this play looks really cool, but how do the players feel about this play or input? And that that's why, and we'll, we'll get to this eventually. That's why a lot of times teams have their starting quarterback come in on the Tuesday day off to have input. So to speak to the play, to speak mm. from the players and about things, we'll get to that. But I really thought like that snippet of the Chiefs thing went far beyond Mahomes. It's just how long Reed's been doing this, and he is an offensive guru. He's very very smart, but he realizes what the engagement of the player needs to be. And it was so much. It looked like that practice was actually fun. It's just as much about culture building as it is coming up with a new play, right? It's kind of 50-50 because they did come up with some new plays that they implemented and scored touchdowns on. Yeah. But then it also just makes everyone feel like it's not a dictatorship. This is where Mike Zimmer went wrong. Everyone felt like belittled almost. You're you're an Eric Kendricks. You're a Brian O'Neill. You're a Kirk Cousins. Like, I'm, I'm a grown-ass adult man who's been around, played football my whole life. I have ideas. I'm smart. You can at least, like, acknowledge me as an equal. You know, you're not you're not coaching a bunch of high schoolers and college players here and not to put Kevin O'Connell and Andy Reid in the same sentence because one of them is one of the greatest coaches of all time. The other one is going into year two, but they both seem to have that human touch. Mm -hmm. They just seem to have that empathetic. They understand culture building. They understand if you're not giving full control to the players, but you're right. empowering them and you're making them feel like. It's a working relationship and we're equals here. Yeah, I get the final say because I'm the head coach. But yeah, I, it, you could just tell like Andy Reid has a great eye for culture building. And so does Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I even uh, with the play calling aspect too and learning the thing. And Cousins said that at the end of training camp last year that Mullins gave him that tip of recording yourself and then on the drive home just listen back to it and, and, and hear it again. I did the same thing with studying for exams in college. I would literally record all of my notes on like my phone. And then I would just listen back to them on, as I walked to campus or walked to class that day. I did it. Wow. I, and it actually did pretty all right. It did all right. I'm not a great, I'm not good at studying as it is. So maybe it didn't do a damn thing, but actually, I thought it did a good thing. Cause it, cause you're hearing it at first, second or third time. You're just hearing it over and over and over in your head again. Nice. So Mahomes had something in terms of his preparation that, that struck with me is like, yes, I've been doing that my whole life too. I, in college and even now, like in meetings, whatever, I like to take handwritten notes. So I've got notebooks full of like prep notes, could be like score north ideas notes, could be business notes, whatever. I like to handwrite everything and then translate notes, type them in. So you're taking the note twice. And I found that interesting that Mahomes does the same thing. He's like, it soaks in better if I write notes in the classroom and then I transfer them over to my iPad. Now I'm like taking the note twice and it, and it right. sticks. Yeah, he um, there, there were things he, he did that in Patrick's case gave you such a good idea of like 
yes, he is gifted beyond belief, but the amount of work he does too was impressive. Like this yeah. is no, there's no, he's not getting by on talent. He will play for a long time because right. that, that dude puts a lot of work in. And I'm not saying that the majority of guys in this league don't, but there, there's certainly, you could certainly see why some guys have flamed out when it's been like, well, I, I was great in college, so I'll yeah. be great here. Patrick Mahomes, like the work he does is, is impressive. And he clearly is drawing up plays constantly to try and pitch to Reed, which I thought was great. Well, and then what was the play? I think it was in the Super Bowl. And, and, it, and they had a guy on the right side of the line of scrimmage. And usually yes. so that, that, that player goes in motion. At the five. And, and they knew that the Eagles, the Eagles would pass off motion. So you saw the cornerback, this you know, outside receiver for the Chiefs goes in motion. Outside cornerback points to the slot cornerback. Hey, carry, you carry the motion over. And they snap the ball thinking that, oh, this guy's just going to keep going to the left. And he cuts back and runs to the pylon. And he's wide open for a touchdown. And Mahomes had changed him. He just made one tweak to a route based on film study. Yeah. It was nice to watching uh, his training regimen and just all the crazy things that his trainer, who, by the way, who has a trainer since the age of fourth grade? He literally said he's been my trainer since he's fourth probably worked for his grade. Dad. He probably worked oh for his dad. God. Yeah. Um, trainer, yeah. But the way he was being basically bent and then also still lifting weights or still being stretched. So, like, when he does make these ridiculous throws, and he has to take a hit at the same time, his body is literally ready for it, which is nuts. They talked about his spine flexibility. I've never heard that in my life. They literally were talking about he <laughs> has spine flexibility. Yeah, I've, <laughs> um, I've heard of that from stuff too. But anyway, to go back to what Phil said, though, the great story about that is, so Mahomes comes off the field after they've scored a Super Bowl touchdown from, I think, the five. And it might have been Matt Nagy said, that's the wrong formation. And he's sort of like laughing. And Patrick goes, I know, and his... That's the same exact thing that in 2009, Childress, who had been an assistant to Reed, of course, before he got the Vikings job, actually got pissed off at Favre for in a game yeah. against Detroit at the Metro because Favre had done the same thing. He moved the formation around. So he's not like changing things drastically. It's a slight alteration. Yeah. But Childress got really mad. He was like really pissed off. And Brett's like, don't be mad about that. And they had and it touchdowns. worked. Yeah, it worked. Reed and Reed and Nagy are like, hey, you changed the formation. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You know, this is yeah. where coaching makes a difference. Yeah. Let your if you have a guy like a you know Brett Favre at the peak of his powers and a yes. Pat Mahomes, maybe let those guys color outside the lines a little bit and sort of. Yeah, not Christian out, right? Ponder. Should we do the Tuesday thing? Should we do the Tuesday? People um, are. We can. I've got. I've got one more off off of this show in particular, though. Is the that, Tuesday I, thing? Oh, is like, that? A, should we save that for the? Let's save that for the next. The next. Okay. Because that's that could be a whole. Mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah, go the ahead. The Tuesday ahead. thing didn't appear in three and four. Okay. Right. No, I'm well, saying we'll it. get. Let's save it. I'm yeah. saying we'll get to it. It's just the the Wednesday thing the Chiefs do is partially oh. why the Tuesday gotcha. thing that I we're gotcha. going to talk about that involves yes. quarterbacks becomes so important. I okay. I did want to get to maybe the funniest thing involving Cousins in this entire documentary came in episode four, and I think it was a flashback to the Cardinals game. In fact, I think they had bypassed the Cardinals game initially, but they then wove it back in yeah. as far as the game that I think one of the commentators said was like the turning point game in realizing that the Vikings were damn good. Yeah. And it is Kirk Cousins. And again, this is just so good. Kirk Cousins, 17 yard run for a touchdown <laughs> in which there's this whole thing That's where, right. where Kirk just decides to, and good for him. He scored just just decides to take off and run. And they asked O'Connell, well, it, as they, they sat down with him, they asked Kevin O'Connell about what did you say? And he said, I said something that probably is not fit for print or something, but it's what the rest of the stadium was thinking. And then they cut to it on the sideline. What the and F was that? Yes. And Kirk scores and, and O'Connell's laughing. He goes, what the F was that? Wasn't it's that toward the end of the half too? So that if, if he were to stay in bounds or get tackled, it was going to be a thing. Yeah. It it might have been. Order or what? But anyway, I loved I, I <laughs> loved that whole thing because again it sort of shows O'Connell, who could have sort of been mad, but of course he's not shouldn't be, absolutely like laughing about that. Yes, and Kirk, is. and Kirk, who occasionally does stuff like this, and I love it. When Kirk goes off script, I think it's great fun. 
Yeah, it's uh, he doesn't feel comfortable going off script and, I know. and gets very frustrated. But but he he works for some time. You know, in his he's not the most mobile guy, but he does pick and choose his spots pretty well to yeah. to run around and, and make things happen. But that yeah, that was a really that was a really funny moment. He's like, what the? So they got they did get Kevin O'Connell and Andy Reid to to sit down for chunks, which was fun to watch. But let's say if yeah, I think it's probably a good place to kind of put a bow on this for now. Because there's still, we'll do one more recapping the last four episodes and some of the themes. That's the there's the Cowboys let down into the Patriots Thanksgiving game, the Colts come back, the two Giants games regular season and postseason. All of that is sort of covered between episodes five and eight, and then we'll get to the the Tuesday thing. You'll know what we're talking about when you when you get to it. It's interesting, yep. yeah. So, um, and there's a there's a Julie Cousins made a hilarious comment too that relates to this show that we will in a Colts game comment that we will get to too. Julie so. is um competitive. Yeah. I would say her and is it Brit Brittany Mahomes what's oh Brittany Patrick Mahomes wants to kill you too. <laughs> her and Patrick are the same person. But Julie oh, is man. definitely competitive. Yep. All right boys. Good stuff here. I think all right well on air show meeting here. I know Judd and I are done with it. I mean should we just Dex, are you where are you at here? I know you want to space it out, but I feel like we should almost just rattle it off tomorrow and let people no, I don't know. Can... Uh so I, I there's two ways to look at it. Number one, so we would do episodes five through eight uh tomorrow, and then we would just do the, the full four episodes tomorrow, or would we do it in two yeah. episodes? Well, all how would we want to do that? I say all of them. Okay. Uh yeah, all I can probably all. rifle all of them out tonight. Yep. Then. Yeah. Eight's a fun watch, but for the for the Kirk part of this, you don't have to watch eight. That's true. Yep. Oh, okay. So there's really no, there's not really nothing Kirk related in eight. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler alert. Because the enough. season's done. Yeah. Uh, do we have time here for a random yes. Viking? Okay. Yeah. Can we do random Viking? Yep. Oh, let's do it. Random Viking of the week right. here. We're gonna. So this time around here, uh, Declan is throwing out the clues. Old Macadac has two straight wins. Tyrell Johnson, Erasmus James. Judd has right. 54 victories all time. We started. We should almost create like a new format section here, because when we when we included Judd giving out the clues, uh, that was probably like a month ago. So now it's the three of us kind of rotating. So losers out. It's me versus Judd today. Declan's gonna throw out a series of clues. We get up to three incorrect guesses each, and then we're eliminated. We can ask Declan questions. He can refuse to answer. It's up to him. No cheating. No googling. Here we go. All right. I'll hit you here with this random Viking of the week. Sir. This random Viking of the Week played in 116 NFL games. Okay. Nice career. Decent. Decent. This random Viking of the Week post retirement uh, raised awareness for dyslexia for kids with dyslexia. Good guy. Um, I guess see if we've done this person real quick here. I'm going to control F. I'm not making any accusations. Yeah, we did. We did. Him. Okay, never mind. <laughs> this random Viking of the Week played five playoff games in his NFL career. And this random Viking of the Week... Played for three NFL franchises, or at least logged games for those three NFL franchises. I'm not going to count, you know, training camp or anything like that. But okay, let's see if this maybe gives it away. I'm curious if it does for you guys. This random like the week played on all three facets of the ball. Defense, offense, special teams. That should give it away. Why does that not give it away? Why does that not give it away? What's 116 games? Are you saying he, 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 uh, no, three, let me three, say, three. Let me, I'll say oh, this, okay? okay. I'll say, yep, I'll yep, say this. Yep, say something else. Yep, yep. 
Nope. Say something else. Just say it. Say it. He has tackles. He has returns. And he has a receiving touchdown on his resume. So you're saying he has played... He, he dabbled at one point. He may have caught one pass, but he, okay. It literally looks like, I'm trying to like confirm this. What? But in 98, he wore, I think, two different numbers with the Vikings. So yes, he did catch a touchdown for the 98 Vikings. Oh God. So wait, okay, so uh, had- David Palmer. Had to throw some guess out there. Ta- wait, but t- receiving touchdown, mm-hmm. returns, and tackles, including interceptions. And we still don't know what's and we don't know his primary side of the ball. You've not given that up yet. Mm-mm. All five of those playoff games came with the Vikings. Yeah, so he's like late. Well, yeah, he was there in '98. That makes perfect sense. Um, hold on. So Phil just gets. I mean, we know we know we're staring right at it. We just. Hmm. 98. Uh, no, it's not him, is it? This no random Viking off guesses? of the week was a sixth round draft pick. Amp Lee. Amp Lee, official guess. I'm just, I'm just panicking. Amp Lee wasn't on. He was a I running know. back for the 49ers. He played for the Vikings, though. No, he did, but I mean, a lot of guys play for the Vikings. We're looking with, with, a, with a specific skill set, a very specific skill set. Particular set of skills. I will, I will, fi- I will find your team and I will kill you. All right. Sixth round pick. He played primarily defense. Okay. Well, this Apparently, is- with the Vikings, he wore the following numbers. 83 and 28. Um, oh no. This random bike of the week is 49 years old. Yeah. We played in the late 90s. 28. It's not Adrian Peterson. This is super weird. 83. So he wore 83. Why would he wear 83 and 28? Because he's a receiver who played cornerback. Okay, I'm I'm gonna take a guess here because there is one. Um, I don't think you would pick this guy, Declan, but I might as well guess. Robert Tate. He was 82, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh my god, that's a great Robert guess, Tate. Dude. Wow. Robert Tate. I, I'm shocked you. I I thought of him pretty it's really early, good. but I did not see that coming. From I want to go to that a well. Is, uh, that's obscure. That's great stuff, right? There. Of a guy I haven't heard of. Cornerback. Yeah. When they when they were desperate. So yeah, he had targets uh, with the Vikings in '98, '99, and with Arizona in '06. Um, so he played a little bit of offense as well. He returned yeah. a kick for a touchdown. Yeah, he, um, was... he actually had two picks in the playoff run that eventually led to 41 donut for the Vikings. Right. Uh, 222 tackles, wow. five interceptions. Yeah, receiving touchdown in '98. I didn't see pretty you cool career. That's a, that was a good one, man. That was. I didn't see you going down that man, path, man. Robert Tate, man. I didn't nice see you going down that path. Judd on the board for the first time in three weeks. Uh, three Darius weeks me, right yeah. now, Do you got a few weeks ago? A few weeks, a few weeks for me. So it'll be you versus Declan. The next time we convene here. All right, boys. There you go. little uh, review of the Netflix series. Quarterback. We'll do a, a, a final one. We'll give you a third part to that. And, uh, yeah, if you could give us a five-star rating and a positive review on the Purple Daily podcast feed, you can help us spread the word here about this daily Vikings entertainment. And click the like and subscribe button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. And We'll see you guys tomorrow.